Listen, getting successful, whatever you consider successful, if it's rich, whatever, it's not a magic trick. It's not God picks certain people he'll make rich and certain people he don't. He gives all of us as his children the power of choice. You have a say-so in that. You can decide to be rich. And with God's help, it's highly doable. But you first have to think it. The difference between successful people and non-successful people is here. I'm no better than none of y'all. I'm not a better person than you. I'm not a better Christian than you. God don't love me more than you. None of that. If you want to be successful, you have to change this. This has to change. Listen to me. It's not what makes it hard is your lack of belief that it can happen for you. The fact of it is, though, it's very doable. See, if, but you got to change, though. If you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. So if you're at a place in your life and you ain't happy with it, you have to change some things. But you have to make a conscientious decision that you're going to change. And it's not dependent on anybody else. It don't matter what your mama think. It don't matter what your coworkers think. It don't matter what your siblings think. It don't matter what your children think. It don't matter. They have nothing to do with it. This decision is yours and yours alone. It's two people born in a hospital every day. It's a person that's born in a hospital that's gonna get a job, and somebody born in a hospital that's gonna give them a job. You get to decide which one you gonna be. You get to decide. Let me tell you something. You get to decide if I'm gonna be rich, poor, mediocre, plentiful, happy, sad. You, you have a decision to make. Your mind, all right, here we go. This is the teaching moment. Let me give you this so you can get on with your 2019. You walk in the house, you pick up the remote control. Let me teach you how this works. And you press the power button. When I told you 2019 will be the best year of your life, but you have to claim it. You have to expect it to be the best year of your life. You have to live your life with the expectation that great things are coming your way. And that's how it works. Now let me teach it to you. You grab your remote, you press the power button. What do you expect to happen? You expect the TV to come on. Guess what? It come on. If you want to see Sports Center, Sports Center Channel 46, and you press 46 and OK or select, what do you expect to come on your TV? Sports Center. And guess what show up? Sports Center. They got the concept of creating a remote from the Bible. See, God is tied to all of this. You better understand what I'm trying to tell you now. When you quit, your mind does this, because you're out. Once you say, I'm not gonna quit, when you quit, your mind says, we're done. So it doesn't expand. There's no expansion when you quit. When you say, F you, uh-uh, this sucks, I'm drowning, I'm miserable, I'm suffering, I'm broken, but I'm not going anywhere. What happens to your mind is it does this. It says, he's not leaving. So we gotta expand, we gotta grow, we gotta figure this thing out. I needed to be ready, I needed to be the things I always talk about. I needed to be stronger and faster and smarter and better. That was a thought that used to drive me and kind of haunt me and make me get up early and work hard to push myself. I've been getting 
on that squat rack and grinding it out for 25 years. And I'm not bored with it yet. It might seem like that's an unwinnable battle. But really, to me, it's not about winning. It's the battle itself. It's the struggle. It's the daily test. That's what life's about. Not just physically, but mentally. Getting that rock to the top of the mountain. That's not what my goal is. My goal actually is pushing the rock. Because pushing the rock, that pushes me. That makes me tougher. That makes me harder, mentally and physically. It, it, it gives me much more than I give it. I want to struggle. I want to grind and claw and scratch and I want to dig in and I want to push. And I don't want it to end. If I ever got the rock to the top of the mountain and it stayed there, I push it back down myself. I don't want to rest and I don't want to coast. And I don't want to reach a point in my life where I say, that's it. I've done enough. I'm not going to give anymore. I'm not going to push anymore. What I'm telling you? You been, oh yeah, this is about you. You about self. You about to run out of fuel. You can't possibly go 30, 40 years on self. Self wasn't designed to go 30 years. For the wages of sin is death. Death. Self always ends in death. We didn't start with prayer because we unique and special. We didn't start praising God because we unique and special. We did that because we know God's sitting up high and God is like, listen to me very closely, son. I, you gonna win the Nobel Prize. You gonna get all of that, why? Because I know when you get it, you gonna brag about me. So I'm gonna make sure you get it. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I just said. I don't know who made the decision for the New York Times best said, I don't know who in LA decided that. USA that I don't know who made that decision, but I know whoever made the decision the night before, just like his wife told him, whatever you do, don't touch Jesus. Take your hands off of him. You let them kill him. God is always going to have somebody in the room that's going to speak the right stuff. You, uh, you think you got to work for it. You don't got to work for it. You just got to let him know if you give it to me, I'm giving it straight back to you. And if you know he's going to give it straight back, he going to give it to you. His wife woke up like, come here, sweetheart. You done lost your mind. You done let Caesar convince you to kill this man. I promise you, if you kill this man, that, that blood going to be on us. Not in the church, it wasn't no church. Wasn't nobody listening to no gospel music. He was going through his regular day and, the, and, and God and his angels spoke specifically to his wife. She said, you're a grown man. I can't tell you what to do, but if it was me, I'm gonna tell you what the angels told me. Don't touch it. I'm telling you right now, I don't know who at the New York Times, but God got in somebody's ear. We, we're number nine, so what does that mean? Somebody hit one, somebody hit two, somebody hit three, somebody hit four, somebody hit five. We went on the list. And somebody was like, oh, have you considered Eric Thomas? Have you considered it? I've seen this list that you have here. I said, it seems like it's missing. Y'all going fast. Y'all getting the 10. Hold up. Y'all about to get the 10 real quick. There's a name missing. What's the name? Well, God told me last night. 